Ladies and gentlemen, please notice that exits are conveniently located at the front and rear of this auditorium. When leaving the theater, we suggest that the exit at the front of the auditorium will allow you easier access to the parking areas. Thank you. Season five, begin! Nice. The season of the audience this is going to be a good one. Because oh, this is not yeah. a forgotten gem. Today we are doing Mike Field's favorite movie. No, that's incorrect. How do you let some guy talk to you like that? That's, yeah, you never once did I smile. Never once did I laugh. While I watched this movie with a, my mouth agape, I could actually feel my soul leave my body. Hi, I'm Mike Butler. And I'm Mike Field. And you are listening to the Forgotten Cinema Podcast. As you may know already, each episode we highlight a film that, for a variety of reasons, was forgotten by audiences. Whether it's because a more popular movie was released at the same time, or the movie simply didn't catch on with an audience in its initial run. But this season, we're not picking the movies. You, the audience, have selected our films. We're going to discuss what we love, like, or maybe not like about your movie. But we thank you for sharing your passion for the film. And as always, we recommend that everyone revisits the movie we're talking about this week. You never know. You could discover your own forgotten gem. If you enjoy our podcast, please let everyone know by rating, reviewing, and subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast. Season five begins! Nice. The season of the audience. It's the season of the audience. <laughs> I just made this up. Okay, never mind. That was... You uh, just make it up. That, that was a... a, a very bad parody of the Age of Aquarius for those out there, for the for that young audience out there. This is the glory of the age. There he goes. Of the audience. Sing it. Sing it. Age yeah. of the Amen. Audience. Amen. All right. So we are doing your movies. This is number one. Well, not number one in terms of ranking. We just the the one we picked. And we. What are you staring at me for? Because you're talking, so I'm staring. It's really it's really awkward. Okay, now, now it's getting really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so we are doing the 2015 action adventure film, The Man from Uncle. And that was brought to us by an employee of ours, Mr. Zach Goodridge. So we're going to now cede the floor to Mr. Goodridge, and he's going to let you know why he wanted Forgotten Cinema to talk about this movie. So I chose The Man from Uncle as my film because I just think it's a great, entertaining summer action movie. The movie itself is very underrated. It has great comedic timing, and it's set in 60s Europe. It just looks amazing. My favorite part, like most people have seen it, is the banter between Army Hammer and Henry Cavill's characters. Those two uh, take shots at each other throughout, and they're very funny. Oh, and by the way, Army Hammer, all-time name. Absolutely flawless name. I believe the movie's been forgotten because of when it was released. 2015 was just full of blockbusters, and The Man from Uncle just got lost within them. And to make matters worse, it was sandwiched in between two huge spy movie franchises releases in Mission Impossible and James Bond. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation being released just two weeks before The Man from Uncle ultimately led it to being unremembered. Oh, that's fantastic. Great Thank job. You. Good job. Good job. It's almost like you were in the room with us. I guarantee you that were, those were some great points. Now get back on the terminal. You got work to do. <laughs> okay. So let's get right into it. I will briefly give you a brief, 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 brief synopsis. You need to say brief again. Brief. At the height of the Cold War. And it's over, guys. That was his brief, brief, brief oh, synopsis. Oh, okay. So let's get back. <laughs> At the height of the Cold War, a mysterious criminal organization plans to use nuclear weapons and technology, ooh, technology, to upset the fragile balance of power between the United States and the Soviet Union. If you haven't guessed already, this takes place in the 60s. CIA agent Napoleon Solo and KGB agent Ilya Kurikin? 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 Yeah. Who cares? Are forced <laughs> to put aside their hostilities and work together to stop the evil doers in their tracks. The duo's only lead is the daughter of a missing German scientist whom they must find soon to prevent a global catastrophe. I mean, that's okay. That's I guess that's an okay synopsis. Basically, these two these bad guys have a bomb. They want to blow it up, and the Soviet Union and the United States work together to stop them. And right. this is kind of the. The Man from Uncle, this movie is an adaptation of the popular 60s TV series starring Robert Vaughn. And that just kind of that series just started that they were together. The group was together. There was no 
in that show, there was no origin story. Oh, they never did a pilot? No. So, well, we'll get into who... Well, Guy Ritchie directed this movie and he brought it to the studio. He, They had interest, him and the writer wide interest in creating the origin story of the man from uncle because uncle is their organization at the end of the movie you discover that right right cool so yeah so i thought that was cool but let's get into i guess some of the facts man so like i said it was uh, released on friday august 14th 2015 has a runtime of 116 minutes pg-13 production budget of 75 million dollars it's opening weekend it did a whopping 13 million <laughs> domestic 45.5 million and then worldwide 107 million you probably can guess maybe why it's a little forgotten, maybe why it didn't catch on. Why not? We'll we'll guess we'll get into that. Like I said on the 14th, it opened up again straight out of Compton, which was a beast in the box office. We worked that show. Do you remember Straight Out of Compton? The working the show, not the movie. I know you watched the movie. Yes. I actually like the movie. Um, quite a bit. Uh the we but that was the only movie that came out like wide. Like there was nothing else that weekend that that was up against the man from Uncle. No. Yeah. So the week before, which was the seventh, you had Fantastic Four. Oh boy, <laughs> that is that is a forgotten film that we will leave yeah. forgotten. That was the one where I guessed the line at the end of the movie. Oh god, remember that? Yes, and I was that, like, yep. well, I can't remember the line, but I was like, oh, he's like, it's kind of like fantastic or something like that. Yeah. Some stupid line, and I said it. This is great, and he goes, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, and I remember I said <laughs> it right before, and I was just like, oh, I can't believe they did that. Uh, also, the I can't gift. believe they did that movie. <laughs> uh, please, money. Um, that same day you had the gift. This was the Jason Bateman gift, uh, not the one with Katie Holmes from the nineties, where she's the she she's not the psychic, but somebody's the psychic. Do you remember that? That's she's not the psychic. That's I don't the, that's I the never Sam Raimi movie. I, I know what you're talking about. That's yeah. a good movie. Uh, Ricky and the Flash, the Meryl Streep star, which was okay. Irrational Man and Cop Car in a limited run. That was with Kevin Bacon. Irrational Man. Irrational Man's with Joaquin Phoenix. Okay, it's an yep. indie. Yep. I think that was it was wide, but obviously not too wide. The 21st, which is the week after the 14th when Uncle came out, you had Hitman, Agent 47, Oof. American Ultra, and Sinister 2. So you had some competition there in terms of action adventure with Hitman. And, and American Fantastic Ultra, Four. kind of. American Ultra, yeah. I mean, but you're in the end. You're the tail end of the summer. We always talk about the tail end of the summers. Do you not really have a lot of stuff going on? They're putting stuff that they think could be summer movies, but they're not sure. Correct. And originally, this movie was scheduled to come out the 16th of January, and they pushed it back to August. So I'm... I, right off the bat, they probably didn't know really kind of how it would fit in. I think it would have done better in January. It might have. There's probably pro I didn't check and see what the competition was back then, but maybe. So I said before, directed by Guy Ritchie, which I forgot, completely forgot that it was directed by him. Shame on me. Guy Ritchie is responsible for the Sherlock Holmes movies, the two of them that came out with Robert Downey Jr. He's done Snatch, which is a fantastic film, and more recently, The Gentleman. He also wrote the screenplay, which he writes for most of the other movies as well. Um, but I'm just going to Keep going with his list of movies, uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, the updated version of Aladdin with Will Smith, and the and King Arthur. That that he, he you're shaking your head. I know it was the King Arthur. King Arthur was a little tough. I like Guy Ritchie. I really like the gentleman. No, so do is I, pretty yeah. good. Um, I, I do like Ritchie, and I, and I think a lot of the stuff in this movie is probably why I liked it. it was his direction and, and what he did on oh, set absolutely. and stuff like that. It's also written by Lionel Wigram. I apologize if I said that wrong. He's he's mainly a producer. He's produced all the Harry Potter movies. He's been an executive producer on all the Harry Potter movies in the Fantastic Beasts. So one of the producers, not the sole one. Okay. Uh, story, but they, they didn't create the story. The story was originally done by Jeff Kleeman and David C. Wilson, along with Richie. Uh, so Kleeman is responsible for writing the screenplay for Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase. That's the one that came out with the, with the actress from It. Okay, they yep. Knew it, yep. And then he, did, he was a producer on The New Vacation, The Vacation... I guess it's a reboot, not really a one well, with Ed Helms. Oh, the one where he plays Rusty? Yeah. Yep. Uh, David T. Wilson has uh, written Supernova and The Perfect Weapon. Uh, cinematography by John Matheson. Uh, more recently, I think the last thing he did was Detective Pikachu, uh, Logan, Gladiator, and X-Men First Class. Uh, produced by Steve Clark Hall and John Davis, among other producers. They do most Guy Ritchie films. John Davis has done Dolomite is My Name, Game Night, and Chronicle, which I think we should put Game Night on the list. What do you think? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was uh, better than I think I expected it to be. Yeah. Edited by James Herbert or Herbert. Uh, he, he edited Age of Tomorrow and Black Book. And music by Daniel Pemberton, who has done Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and he's doing the sequel, uh, The Harley Quinn Birds of Prey, and Venom. So, you got some good guys in there. Yeah, some big Clearly. names, yeah. Big names. So, Napoleon Solo is played by Henry Cavill. He is the Man of Steel from Man of Steel. I know him from The Tudors. He was on that. 
I know Mike knows him from The Witcher, which I got to tell you, my wife and I watched the first episode of The Witcher and we had no idea what the hell was going on. It, no idea. That's pretty much the whole show. The first four episodes. Oh you're not my God. My brother, we were like, who are these people? What's happening? We didn't. We were clueless. Clueless. They, they, they fill you in as you go. Yeah. Because you find out it's, it's, it's I, I told you you're not you going like to Yeah. I, I don't think we're going back. She wanted to watch it. So we put it on. And then that's like right. about 30 minutes in, I'm just like, oh, what's happening here? Listen, there's things that both you and then my other friend, uh, Dave, when like I tell you guys I like stuff, when I tell you I don't think you're going to like it, it's because I don't think you're going to like it. I get it. I know. <laughs> I, I, I try to keep an open mind about things. I try to watch a lot of different things. I know you do. If yeah. I can't get to it, I, you know, if I can't get into it, it's tough. And there's so much content out there now that you really have to be kind of, listen, I'm not into this. I need to but move listen, on. Listen, it is on the top 10 of Netflix's list. So oh, That doesn't mean anything. Well, you want to be cool, you got to watch it. I don't have to, uh, I'm not cool? <laughs> Dang it. Army Hammer plays Ilya. Uh, he is the from the Social Network. He played the brothers. Uh, Call Me By Your Name and The Lone Ranger, which we have done that episode. You, If you are fans of Forgotten Cinema, you've already heard us talk about The Lone Ranger. That's right. Uh, is it Alicia or Alicia? It's Alicia. Vikander, Alicia Vikander, from, who plays Gabby, which she's not even in. I, I, wrote, I ran through the synopsis, and they don't even name her in the synopsis, which is ridiculous because she's part of the stupid uncle team. Well, that's your stupid synopsis. I know, but I, because I don't feel like bumbling through what the movie's about. That's what people come to the podcast. No, they don't. They don't come for the bumbling. They come for the fights. <laughs> well, here's a fight right now. <laughs> Bumble through your own. Shut up. Uh, she is an ex machina. She won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress in The Danish Girl. And she is Tomb Raider. She's the new Tomb Raider. She's the new Lara Croft for all you video game fans out there. Elizabeth Debicki. I probably said that wrong. Is Victoria. She's great Gatsby. Widows and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. She's only in that. She's part of the gold people. The people that are all gold. She's the main right? gold lady. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. kind of a big character. No, no, no. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I, I only saw that in the theater. I haven't gone back. Hugh Grant plays Waverly. Uh, do you, you all know who Hugh Grant is, right? From Four Weddings and a Funeral, Notting Hill, Love Actually. Jared Harris plays Sanders. Um, Jared Harris is fantastic in Chernobyl, the TV show on HBO. That show is fantastic. He's also fantastic in The Terror. That's another TV show. Um, I did not watch the sequel, the second, ep, uh, the second season of The Terror, because it has nothing to do with the original Terror. It's like an anthology now. I read the book that the, the first series is based on. Watch the series. Read the book. They're really good. Anyways, he's in Lincoln and he's also, <laughs> he plays Moriarty in Sherlock Holmes' Book of Shadows. And yeah, so that's what I got. So we didn't pick this movie. So this is a little weird. So we didn't like, this wasn't on our list. No. Some of the movies that people had chosen, we had on our list a little bit, but this one of the movies we didn't. So it's a little weird because I don't know like where to go. <laughs> <laughs> like how to, how to proceed. I've, I've always liked this film. I like this film right. a lot as well. I've always enjoyed this film. I don't know why. Maybe we should get into why, maybe, why do you think, I don't know what, obviously we don't know what Zach says because we do, we record these ahead of times. Right. We so, pretended to listen to what Right. We, we, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you understand that. And we're busy people. But <laughs> why mean, would you think that this is something that's forgotten? Primarily, I'm going to tell you right now, probably because it didn't make money. It didn't make money. I think it came out, I think at the time, Army Hammer's movies weren't doing well. He gets a bad rap. He does get a very bad rap. He's kind of like Taylor Kitsch. Taylor Kitsch is in, you ever see Survivor with Mark Wahlberg? The Peter Berg movie where they're the four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a great movie. I, th I don't think Taylor Kitsch is bad. I just think he gets a bad rep as well, just kind of like Army Hammer does, is that his the, his movies just don't do well. Like, he's not bad. It's just he he picks or his agent picks, whoever it is, picks movies that end up not doing well. I don't think there's anything wrong with John Carter. I actually enjoyed John Carter. It was a little cheesy, right. but it wasn't terrible. But then everybody just blasts it. Well, you're a sci-fi guy though, right? You're yeah, but huge there's, in the a, there's a lot of sci-fi guys. Well, we're talking about the man from Uncle. But I, I'm just saying, Army Hammer, I think, gets that sure. kind of rap. Agreed. So I, I think you put him in a movie, and it's kind of like, move like box office kryptonite for the which is stupid kind of. because he's actually I. We've already talked about the Lone Ranger, and I like him in the Lone Ranger. I liked him in the Social Network. I thought he's great. Right. And call me by your name. Yeah, it's. I know that's not he. Timothy Chalamet was the one that kind of shone through with Call Me by Your Name and the director. You know, and Army Hammer's kind of left to the side a little bit, right. but he was still good in it. No, yeah, yeah. I, I, I they get he get he's getting a bad rap for unknown reasons, unknown, which but is ridiculous. I think he does a great job in this film. I think Henry Cavill. They is, both do. There's is, a is chemistry good. between them that's oh, really, sure. really good. I know we're talking about how, why it's forgotten. I think who knows the people in it? They weren't big enough stars yet. I Guy don't Ritchie. know. Right, Henry Cavill. He came off of Man of Steel, right? This is before it. This is no, this is after Man of Steel. It's still right. That's what I'm saying. So, I mean, he wasn't his his turn as Clark Kent really wasn't 
the movie's not beloved by a lot of people. No, so I mean, people aren't flocking to see Henry Cavill. Yes, but I, I, I think Henry Cavill is really good as well. Mm-hmm. But I think Guy Ritchie, like Aladdin, obviously made a lot of money because it's Aladdin. But I think when Guy Ritchie doesn't put out his criminal gangster movies, I don't think they do great. I think maybe that's what he's known for. So you kind of put him in a hole. So when he tries to do a movie that's not that, it kind of undercuts what he's trying to sell. You you look at it, his movies like King Arthur, which to be fair was not very good. Uh, Man from Uncle. Well, you know, people want him to do a certain kind of movie. So when he does something else, people are like, eh. Aladdin's not his movie though. That's he. That's a paycheck. The hat. That's a gotta sure. be a paycheck. It doesn't movie. have a. It doesn't have a no. ton of Guy Ritchie touches. The Sherlock in Holmes stuff has a lot of stuff in there. That's I love him. the, the, the fighting Holmes scenes. Movies. Yeah, they have they have a lot of cool things in there. But that fits his style. What that's another his creation. Yeah. If he did, if he just did movies that were like The Gentleman, and mm-hmm. I would be fine with that. Like these crime drama movies, the crime action movies, and all that kind of ilk. That's fine. I'm good with that. I I enjoy Guy Ritchie and, and reading about this movie. One of the things I kept hearing or kept reading was that all the actors and the people involved were talking about how it even like not just the actors, uh, set designers, production designers, people that were stunt work or stunt. Uh, workers and stuff like that like richie has a, a not a policy but the way he directs is he wants you to bring ideas he doesn't want he wants to collaborate he doesn't like this is how we're doing that's it he wants you know he that's the whole point of it it's the whole point is to bring together this story with everyone involved and he gives them the latitude and the and uh the wherewithal to whether not to not just to ad lib off book completely but to kind of add new things if they want to with their characters oh, and i think yeah. hammer has the quote or has or maybe it's cavill i don't one of them has the quote where one day you would come in and you'd be completely on book and you'd be going with whatever the script is and that's it you're good to go and then the next day would be completely different you would you would have to change stuff here and there and he's like it was so fresh it kept you you know on your toes he didn't do a lot of rehearsals you just you kind of went through it but then you you went through it on the screen it's like i love that like that's that's, no, that's how good, i would yeah. direct that's how i want to direct like i think that's and you can tell that they're having fun they're like enjoying the process they did oh, all yeah. their own they did most of their stunts i read that the yeah. stunt double for army hammer was kind of like bored that he was never called up because right. he kept doing his stuff but they're not it's not like they're like there's a lot of stuff for them to do they're just running and jumping like the major stuff they're not going to do so right. I, I i when i read that i was like all right i i the note i have down here is like guy Ritchie sounds like my kind of director just i dig that no i like that too yeah collaborative process yeah absolutely because that's how a lot of you know when I was learning my craft, I, I learned a lot of it on stage, um, you know, in school and stuff and, and directly out of school. And stage is a very collaborative process as well, mm-hmm. mostly because you're rehearsing, you're figuring it out and then you're putting it on. Mm-hmm. But I like that some of how some of that bleeds into film because it really does as an actor or a creator, it really does give you the freedom to kind of not be beholden to like, all right, I have to, which I get put the director's vision on screen, but to put your own touches on it is nice because well, then the director can yeah. be yes or no, but at least you can be like, hey, let me try something. Hitchcock's famous for no, for saying that actors are like cattle and he just wants them to do what he wants them to do. Right. And I, and while I understand that mentality, that doesn't make for a very fun set. Yeah. Or collaborative process. Film is collaborative. The whole thing is collaborative. You can't really go in. If you want to do something on your own, write, write your screenplay or write a story, write a book. Yeah. And that's the, that's really the only control. Once you want to put it on screen, you really, it's your responsibility to take the best idea or the best idea that works. I've always, I always said it before. I'll say it again. When an actor comes up to me and wants to do something, can I try this? Can I try that? All, all I care about is if it's in service to the story, if it's in service to the character that we're portraying, if it's just because you want to put on a hat for no other reason, because you want to put on a hat and you can't give me a reason why other than it looks cool. I'm really not going to, that's not something that's going to fly with me. Yeah. You know, it, it has to be, there has to be a real reason behind it because that's what I want. I want you to take the script, take the story, whatever we're doing and make it your own within that script. You know, I don't want you to just go off and be like, Oh, I found this hat when I was walking down the street and I put it on. Now that being said, I don't put it past cause we're talking about Guy Ritchie and with Sherlock Holmes. I don't put it past like somebody like Robert Downey Jr. Just doing that, doing whatever he wants. I don't really want to get too much into Sherlock Holmes, but I know that Robert Downey Jr the whole fighting technique he used and stuff. They had a whole thing went up. The fight director knew what he wanted to do. They choreographed fights with their stunt team. They're like, we're going to do this. He came on the picture and said, no, I'm taking this class and this karate. So this is what I want to use. So we're yeah. going to do this, the slapping, the slappy karate thing. Yeah. Because that's what he wanted. Yeah. I so mean, then the stunt, the stunt guy was like, all right. 
that kind of sucks. I would hate that. I, I don't, I don't think I, I, I mean, I, I get it. Big time star does what he wants. He's, he's the reason why people are watching. Yeah. Him. I get that. That's just a dick move. That's, that's, that's not fair to the people around that. That's really not fair to the people that have put a lot of energy into doing something. If that's what you wanted to do in the beginning, then lay that out. Say, Hey, listen, before we get into the process of building everything, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Don't do it as soon as you walk on and, and whatever. Yeah, production like, already yeah, started that, that, and stuff like that. That kind of sucks. But let's get let's get back to this movie. I didn't notice anything in the notes, and I'm wondering if it's on purpose or maybe I just didn't. Maybe I'm looking for it and it shouldn't be there. Did you notice, and I enjoyed this, that the look of the film is like a desaturated, muted look of the 60s with just pops of color everywhere? Oh, absolutely. Okay, because I didn't, I was looking, I didn't want to, I'm watching it. And I'm like, am I just like looking for this? Am I trying to be, am I being a douchey film critic? No, I, that? I, that's one of my notes too, is I love the way that it looks like it was filmed. Oh, like obviously it doesn't look like it was filmed in the sixties, but it does have that sixties color palette. Oh, absolutely. Big time. And not just in what they're wearing, but in what the film, how the film is colorized. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. I like the fact that they argue over fashion when they're trying to dress her and they're like, they're both like arguing like what goes with what. It does, but it doesn't match. It doesn't have to match. <laughs> That's it. Just shows that they're very fancy men. You can't put a pack or a band belt on a batu. She's not going to wear a batu. What's wrong with a batu? Nothing. If you're fat, but your goes with a raban. It won't match. It doesn't have to match. Have you seen the price of this handbag? I guess that's supposed to reference something from the TV show. Uh, one of the characters goes off and does that or something. Uh, oh, really? I didn't, we didn't get into, we both talked about before we talked about this movie, before we started the recording that you were like, I want I to watch the watch show. The show. Yeah, yeah. 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 We just don't, sometimes we just don't have time, man. We just don't have time. Um. So what, give me something that you really, something else that stood out for you, I guess. I, my first note was how quick the film is to introduce both your main characters Actually, all three of your main characters, Alicia Vikander as well. It's a great opening sequence. And, and just it opens with this fun sequence right off the bat. You get him coming across the Berlin Wall, finding the transmitter in his pocket. And then, boom, all of a sudden, Ilya's after Napoleon and Gabby mm-hmm. in the car. You get this great chase scene with cuts like Guy Ritchie like cuts where it zooms into the car, zooms out. You've got the Guy Ritchie touch where he flashes back to the moment where he got the bug put in his jacket. And it's just you know exactly what this film's going to be. And it's ridiculous and over the top and fun. And you just, okay, it's got comedy. It's got action. It's very stylized. Let's go. And you get a sense of the characters in that. You get a sense of like his quippy, Solo's quippy, kind of laissez-faire attitude a little bit. And then he is nonstop, kind of Terminator. Angry and upset. (laughs) He's like, he's chasing, he's running after us. I love that. When he gets, when he gets, he's he's grabbed the car. (laughs) He's trying to stop the car. Aren't you going to shoot him? Somehow it doesn't seem like the right thing to do, <laughs> which I love. Henry Cavill's like spot on. Mm-hmm. It's almost too American to be American. Accent, <laughs> which is um, when I, I wanted to have at least watch this because I remember really liking it in the theaters and I made her watch it with me. The first thing she's like, can we watch a trailer for? She was like, his voice is like too perfect in this movie. I'm like, that's kind of the character he plays. Yeah. Because he's very much like this. He's, a, he's, not a, he's not a person who's from sophistication, but he likes to act that he's from sophistication. Exactly. Which he's is, kind of put himself in sophistication. Which adds when he's making the truffles, the risotto with the, tr- <laughs> with the, with oh, the yeah. truffles. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't make me think that our salary lets you afford truffles, Mr. Silver. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the opening sequence is great. Did, they did a lot of that was a lot of practical. So a lot of yeah. the stuff with the cars was built in. They had people driving the cars. They had them on gimbals and all that stuff. They did as many practical stuff as possible in the movie. I mean, obviously you're not going to create the Berlin wall. That's got to be put in there digitally. Cause that's over. Yeah. Uh, but I appreciate that. I appreciate the practical stuff. I love when the car goes into the staircase keep oh, going. It's yeah. getting too thin. Just keep driving. <laughs> <laughs> Where do we go now? Look to your left. Hey, he rolls down the window. Yeah, go out the window. Take your next left. <laughs> uh, one of the things I enjoyed not to skip to the end, but yeah, after everything's all done and this goes to their character work and at, you know, their whole, well, before they, they team up at the end and all that stuff. And Ilya gets the phone call from the Russian consulate because they basically tell them, you know, you're going to work alongside them, but if you have to kill, get the plans for the nuclear warhead or the weapon, because if you have oh, to kill yeah. them, kill them. And obviously they don't want to because they've developed a, a, a bond a together. Bond yeah. And not like a, a friendship, but a friendship, but not like a relationship where they care for each other, but it's just kind of like a brother's they respect each other. Yes. Yeah. 
Which, I mean, maybe I'll, I should have saved it for the end, but, you know, it, it's too bad there's no sequel to this because you can develop that further. I like that it doesn't end with them being best friends. That's what I'm saying. I enjoy the fact that he gets pissed. He still has an anger issue. Illy, I'm talking about. Yep. Army Hammer's character. He still has an anger issue. He still has unresolved conflicts with his father how his father he tells his father's in the Siberian jail do you want to go there he's your yep. father disrespected us he's he's somebody who's brought shame to your family he still has a lot of baggage with him that you would think that would carry over into a second movie oh which, for sure yeah, right and uh and uh, the fact that he goes upstairs to he has to kill him to get it but he doesn't want to and you know he said you know obviously the ending they don't do that they get they stay together that kind of thing yeah so no i i enjoy that their characters stay true to their characters they didn't it didn't become like, all oh, right, we're together. No, so <laughs> even I, at the end when they find out they're working together for a longer term, mm -hmm. they all of a sudden annoyed at each other that they have to keep working. Mm -hmm. with each did other. you write down what uncle means? No, I, uh, I didn't. Did you? Yes. What of course I did. United, United Network Command for Law Enforcement. There you go. UNCO. I do love in the credits the um, opening of their dossiers. Mm -hmm. Then you have their history in there. And they introduce Waverly and stuff like that. Yeah, where yeah. he was ex-drinker, uh, drug addict. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. Clean. I'm like, oh, he sounds like a really interesting character. If they had a sequel, they could develop They more. should. They honestly, I read somewhere that in 2017, Wigram was like, there was working on it. But like, if they wanted to do it, but they should. I mean, there's no reason why. I get it. I get why Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers was the one that distributed it. Rat Pack produced it with a couple other production companies. Um, Let's see. Rat Pack, Dune Entertainment, Davis Entertainment, Turner Entertainment. So that's uncredited. But Warner Brothers distributed it. I get why they wouldn't do it because it didn't make a lot of money. But it's such it was such a good premise and it's a good movie. It, it deserved like the characters were well done. It deserved another kind of go around. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know they just it's just a good film. It's like you said. It's got a great opening. The sequence where they try to break into the well they do break. They don't try to. They break into the warehouse to steal Into the satellite warehouse. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And they have the huge scene where they're chasing on oh, the water. The boat scene's hilarious. When he's eating the, yeah, like, go ahead. Napoleon and uh, Ilya are escaping on a boat because the uh, satellite factory, the warehouse is connected to the water. They're closing all the docks so they can't go anywhere. Ilya keeps trying to outrun this boat. And so it was like, pull over, pull over. Ilya does a hard turn, accidentally knocks Soto out. So Napoleon gets in this truck where he finds a sandwich and some wine that some guy had. And he just starts opening it and watching. Ily just keeps going in circles <laughs> with a bush. in the reflection him. of, yeah. Yeah. And then finally, Ilya's boat's on fire. Solo's like, eh, drives away, <laughs> gets a guilty conscience. And then the next shot is just him driving the boat over, over the edge of the water and then landing on top of the bad guys. Which, again, was practical. They oh, actually yeah. made the boat lighter and put it on hydraulics and had it sink down when the boat came down all that stuff that's fantastic that they that, that it's all just done in in camera that's and Solo's just like very calmly rolls back his window up and lets the thing fall yeah. out of the ocean and that is hammer driving the boat because he's a boat he's a he's driven speedboats before so that's him doing it oh nice yeah which is again is great he really did love to do his own stunts <laughs> there's little things in that scene where when he safe he cracks the safe and he opens the door and the camera's attached to the door. Oh, I like that. I love nice that shot. shot. Yeah. Because it goes from him to right. uh, uh, Hammer. Yeah. It becomes his one shot to Ilya's one shot, which is nice. Right. And I love that in this scene from the very beginning when they both get up to the fence and they each have their own tools. One is better than the other at something. Yeah. So like they not, none of them get the one up on it on each other. Oh, and he when Solo has the clippers, and he's like clippers. clippers that are sharpened with a carbon laser and he's like and he has to, he's like what's that carbon laser then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to lockpick with the fancy robotic yeah. lockpick that's not going and solo just opens it mm -hmm. and then the uh the kiss i don't know is that from the show the slap that he gives the one guy that puts i have him unconscious no idea up? i have no like, idea we'll call it the kiss it takes a long time to master yeah I've, I've, I've no idea i mean you're instantly going to compare this movie to james bond now, do you compare it to the James Bonds from the 60s or do you comp now? Did you see the note of the helicopter and all that stuff? Did you read that? No. So the helicopter they use in the movie, and I want to say it's at the end, is the exact is the helicopter they used in Goldfinger is the same helicopter. It's still functional. Yes. Oh, that's pretty cool. So and they were I guess the note that I read, they were all excited. The fact that they had they got to use the helicopter. They're like everyone was jazzed that they that was there on set when they were using it. So yeah, I thought that was good. So do you back to my question, do you compare that? At all? You can't really, because the thing about the James Bond in the 60s, which is the Roger Moore James Bond, basically the Roger Moore James Bond was 
over the top and campy sometimes for fun, but sometimes just because it was lame. And yeah, it really I, I grew take- up with Roger Moore. You did. You grew up with Pierce I grew up with Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, I well, grew up with Roger Moore, and I used to love Roger Moore. Timothy Dalton was James Bond when I was very young. Yeah, his, but his I don't. I wasn't like his James Bond movies are serious or more serious. They're than, much like the Daniel Craig mm-hmm. movies, which if like his were they were out of time basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, Roger Moore was just silly, but it wasn't really for comedy's sake. It was just like, hey, things yeah. have to be spoofy and silly and funky because well, it's the sixties. Yeah, that that makes sense. So. I, I can't really compare. I can say that they got some of their style from that, but then they did their own kind of thing with it. I don't really make James Bond connections. I make connections to like Get Smart and it's like Secret Agent Man and stuff like that mm-hmm. more than this. I, I'd never watched Man From U.N.C.L.E. the show, but. Well, I'm going to make another James Bond connection for you. So okay. the original TV series was co-developed by Ian Fleming and oh. Napoleon Solo started out as a character in the novel Goldfinger. Now, I don't know if he's still in it because I've never read it. But he started, he was a character in that book. So Fleming kind of, this is, he does have his hands in there to the original series. That's cool. Right. So uh, as far as this movie is concerned, probably not. I like that Henry Cavill gets his James Bond shot though. At the very beginning of the film when he shoots out Ilya's tires. Because Henry Cavill was going to be James Bond back when Casino Royale was coming out. They screen tested him. They liked him for the role, but he, they decided oh, after all, he was too young. He'd be good now. He would be very good now. So I like that they give him that shot where his his face is silhouetted in the shadows and the light kind of beams kind of bleed over in that lens flare. He'd be a good James Bond, really good James he Bond. Would be. I mean, I don't know who they're gonna where, where they're gonna go, but he'd be a good one. Yep. Now Soderbergh was gonna direct this, and then he he exited because he they had disagreements. I don't I don't see this being a I can't see this being a Soderbergh film. I can see it being a film in terms of the quips, and the chemistry and the writing. I the action I can't see. Everything's a reveal in this movie. Everything is sleight of hand. Everything is a, oh, but we did this, which is classic Guy Ritchie. It would not be the same movie if it were Soderbergh. And, and you said the Guy Ritchie had a hand in writing this, creating the story. He, well, he did the story, and then I think he came out. Well, who knows? I don't know what the story yeah, was before. Yeah, is this before he might have got Guy a, Ritchie make the story and look? He might have got a story credit when he came on. And he was like, no, 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 let's, because he wanted to do the origin story. Because originally George Clooney was cast as Solo, but he had, I think, because ever since Syriana. He can't he, do action right because he uh, really messed he, himself he up. He cracked his spinal cord for yep. crying out loud. He's got fluid that's leaking. Oh, my God. I read that. I was like, oh. Just from falling off a chair. Oh, my God. Oof. But anyways, so I'm assuming that they were both there together. And maybe that, and then they left, and then they when Richie came up, on, yeah. he wanted to do the origin story, so they probably changed. So they probably did, whatever what? they want to do is probably different. I like Soderbergh, so whatever he was probably going to do would would be good, mm-hmm. but it wouldn't have been the same. I also read that Tom Cruise was originally going to do. Uh, he's, he's attached Solo to everything. And dropped out because he wanted to just focus on Mission Impossible. Well, you have a big, which is fine, I, but I don't think he would have worked. I like he might have worked in terms of the fact that Napoleon Solos this this uh, kind of like, hmm, hey, hey, how you doing? It's all smiles. I don't know. Art it thief. would have been his movie. He w- but it I, would have been far more art thief than anything else. And yeah, it wouldn't have been a team up movie. It would have been. And and well, if you had Tom Cruise solo. in there, you ain't have an army hammer because he's six foot six. And there's no way Cruise is going to be like, yeah, I'm cool with that. Cause he's like five, nothing. He's like five foot. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> five foot butler. Uh, I, I don't know. Cause he's acted against taller people before. I mean, they always find ways, I guess, but I'll tell you this. It, it would be, the title would probably be Napoleon Solo, oh, Man from Uncle. Yeah, it, he would take. It wouldn't be anyone else's movie but his. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a T Bone movie. No, and that's too bad. It should have been because this movie does, needs to be a. I mean, it is a part. It is a a duo, but it really is an ensemble. It should be a little bit more. Like even if like again, if you did a second film, mm-hmm. I'd want more of Gabby in there because you don't have a lot of her. You don't realize her twist at the end, like that she's a British agent. No, well, right. kind of a British agent. Well, they, no, he says they re, they were they Waverly got her two years prior, and were waiting, were sitting on her, right, for somebody to 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 contact her about her father, right. But she wasn't really an agent. Not like not in terms of like how Solo and oh, you are. and uh, what's okay, his face? So she's like more of like military. an asset. She's more of an asset. An asset who became a spy. Yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah, I agree. She's really good. I like her character. She. I, I'll tell you this: there is a scene where she's getting drunk with uh, Ilya in the room, and she's dancing. She's trying to get him to loosen up, and she just keeps drinking this vodka. And it's classic Hollywood: how every actor or actress can pour a ton of booze into a glass and drink it in one gulp. <laughs> and have nothing burn. Just like, mm, what's going on next? It's it's not water. It's not Sprite. Act like it burns. 
I've never met anyone who can just go, mm, go unless they're already like blackout drunk. And even then, they're at least going, ah. At the <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're tough guys in, uh, <laughs> in, in the movies. No, I would be able to do that. Like I, I had last night, I met a friend and I had uh, absolute and soda drinking a half and I was done. <laughs> I like him drinking, but I was <laughs> <laughs> lightweight. <laughs> Let's talk about how much of a dick Uncle Rudy is. So, I mean, you meet Uncle Rudy is awful. He's awful. He's an evil guy because you find out that he's the angel of death or whatever. He's the, like eight things. The that fifth, turns out they were all yeah, Uncle Rudy. the fifth horseman who likes to uh, torture kids and whatever. But you meet your nieces or your granddaughters or whatever she is, your nieces, the fiance, fiance, and you're like straight up just insult him because well, he's on. He's from uh, the west, uh, east of the wall. Yeah, yeah. What a dick. Well, I can't, I don't know. It's it's almost kind of like racism, but I don't know if like that's how everybody acted back then, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know how people acted with each other back in Europe. Like, were people like that whenever they met a Russian? Like, screw you, Kami. Just in, in public, no matter what? Who knows? I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love how Uncle Rudy gets it, though. Oh, I, I, when they're when they're talking about bringing him in, oh, I'll probably get, he'll probably be let go, and he'll probably be let go. They'll probably give him he'll trade. He'll trade for somebody else, oh. and he'll and get his to go trade do is always in demand. Do. Right, right. Yeah. And meanwhile, Uncle Rudy's being strapped to the chair, but the electric <laughs> the electricity's on, so he's frying, and they only <laughs> notice when the fire beams on each other's faces. <laughs> it's a funny scene. There's a uh, there's a lot of good stuff in there, and we're so why don't you why don't you tell tell everyone what our favorite quote is in the movie? Oh my God! So. <laughs> When they first get to Italy and Ilya has to act like he's this architect fiance of Gabby's, he uh, gets contacted by Napoleon Solo and he's, people are following. He's like, I know as well. They're going to try to mug you to make sure you are who you say you are. Don't fight back. You can't because you're an architect. He yeah, wouldn't you know how to, to fight. So yeah. if they mug you, get mugged, get punched. And at the end he goes, remember, take it like a pussy. <laughs> and then he drives away and... I love that line. That line's great. And I remember when we first saw it in the theater, we were saying that for like weeks. Yeah. Remember, take it like a pussy. Oh, it's great. It's a great delivery. It's a great line. I think the the delivery is what makes it the line. Oh, yeah. I believe. Um, but it's just it's 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 a funny line. And there's a lot of different little lines and little back and forths that are funny, but that's probably the one that stood out the most for me at least. Just to avoid any confusion, you do mean giving your wallet an act scared. And remember, take it like a pussy. I like when they're watching Uncle Rudy burn. It's damn. I left my jacket I left in there. My, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice the David Beckham cameo? He's the projectionist in the beginning when they're talent showing Ilio. Oh, like, and he's like, turn Sol it around. Yeah, he's the projectionist. Like, ooh. I didn't notice. That. I was yeah. paying more attention to the fact that the film was flipped those upside are, down. Those are for all our soccer fans out there, or fo real football fans, I guess. Did um, you also think that the end action sequence was kind of an advertisement for all-terrain vehicles? Like, it, hey, it get your little, dune buggy now. It was a little weird. Like, the song picks up when it's just like, ah, and then it stops. And I'm, and I'm going, okay, wh wh when's the next chord? And then it kicks and then in. The next and shot. then it never really kicks off until like... The entire song is the beginning of yeah. the song. Which I kind of like. Every time they go by, it's just kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But every it just seemed like a car commercial to me. It seemed like every shot was like, buy the new Z25 dune buggy today. Or the new Z22 motorcycle attachment. Yeah. Or buy this Jeep. And it's like, this Jeep goes underwater. This all-terrain vehicle goes skids across water. <laughs> this motorcycle goes uphill. <laughs> buy them today. And I was just like, what? It was a little Nothing's weird. going on here. I enjoyed the... The way it was shot when it was looking down and it, you obviously digitally zoom over to the car driving and it would zoom back to them how far away they were. Right, I liked yeah. some of that stuff, but you're right. It felt very much like like we were watching an ad. Yeah, I, I didn't notice it the first time I watched it in theaters, but this time I was like, mm, this seems like an ad. Do you like the split screen stuff? The When they cut up the screen? Because they, they don't... I, I did like it a couple times. Right. I like when they were in the castle. And they both meet up and it's almost like there's just this black bar that ends up going, oh, that's not actually there because they are now together. They do that twice. They do it in the satellite as uh, warehouse as well. Yes. The satellite warehouse, I thought it was okay. I liked it a little better at the castle, but it's okay. In the castle one, they're kind of getting through a lot of the action stuff when they get there. They're not showing a lot, which I, I appreciate a little bit because then it would just be another action scene. That's what I was thinking the whole movie is like they don't kill a lot of people. They no. don't shoot a lot of people or have a lot of fights. Well, you have the set piece in the beginning with the Berlin Wall. And that's more of a chase. But it's I'm talking about an action set oh, piece. Oh, just so, yeah. You have the set piece at the satellite. 
Yeah. The fight. I mean, you can't really count their fight, even though they fight in the bathroom. In the bathroom. The set piece at the when they break into the satellite. Um, that's it. The set piece at the end. The castle. Castle. The dune buggies, and yeah, that's it. So that's kind of like I would. Uh, that's like two and one. Those are those are all the same. Yeah, that's really it. And then it's more about like spying and just kind of which is because kind of, spies yeah. shouldn't be blowing stuff up all the no. time necessarily. Yeah. So I mean that's cool. But I just did notice that. And then, like you said, when they get to the castle, they kind of gloss over it. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, they are also soldiers. They know how to do this stuff. This is a movie that it's really, it's, it's just, when I say a cool movie, I don't mean like, hey, man, this is a cool movie. It obviously is. But I'm saying it just seems like just a cool, hip movie. Like, everything in it is, is, is fun. Oh, yeah. It, it looks sleek. It looks slick. It looks... It, what's on screen looks great. The 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 wardrobes, the the production design, you know, the like I said, the word, the fashion, all that stuff looks fantastic. And even the acting style is a little almost like harkens back to those to the sixties type, mm-hmm. more serious. Not when I say jokey, like not Roger Moore jokey, like you say, like where it's just like weird, but it's more like just the quips and stuff the like quips that. The quips are, yeah. are are said seriously without a wink and a nod, right. and they're just funny. The music cues are are, are good. It just seems like just a a really hip film and I'm surprised I'm actually I'm not surprised that a lot of people missed on this because it's not force fed to you it's not it doesn't have a superhero in it yep it's It's, not a conventional action right it's something that you really it's a stylized movie it's a spy movie it's and with Mm -hmm. James Bond has the luxury of always being set in the time frame that you're living when you watch it yeah so this is obviously a period piece because it's in the 60s so I think that had that really kind of turn people away because they, maybe they didn't understand what it was. Maybe they weren't interested in that. Maybe they just, maybe the two leads aren't big enough for them to go see the movie. I don't know. Um, but I think a lot of people missed on this movie. And, and I mean, general audiences, I don't mean critics or anything like that. I, I really don't pay attention to critics. Sometimes I'll put in their quotes, but I don't pay attention to critics. Yeah. I don't want to watch a movie. Um, so yeah, so I, I was just saying, I really think a lot of people, that's why I think people missed on this film. I ac- absolutely agree. I think Guy Ritchie is kind of like, I always think of him as like Quentin Tarantino light and not to say that he's not good. Mm-hmm. That's not a, a, that's not a, a burner or a, a knock against Zing. Guy Ritchie. It's, he's not like diet, uh, Twin Tar- 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 Coke. Quentin, like diet, diet, diet Tarantino. Yeah. He's, is he new key to, he's new Coke. <laughs> his stuff is, even though he is like a lot of his stuff is British crime and stuff like that. He's fun. He has he's, his own style. He's got his own style, but it's, it's very much like, Quentin Tarantino in that it's very stylized. It's very much like cuts and you go back and you learn things that you didn't know before about the scene by going forward. Mm-hmm. Like he, he moves back to go forward, which is something he's very, very good at. And other directors try and fail and confuse you. Mm-hmm. He, kind he of can, like The Witcher. <laughs> <laughs> Quentin Tarantino puts a lot of stuff on screen that is an homage to something that he loved growing up or he loves watching. And, and, and he doesn't make any bones about that. Like he's not copying. He's just... He's using it's it. It's like a love letter to it. Right, yeah. right. But Richie, I would think his his style is his style. What he, you know what I mean? Like sure, it's yeah, a, it's a guy Richie film. Those quick cuts and you go back and you, yeah. Right. I can yeah, I can put a guy Richie film on without you knowing if it's guy Richie and you could be like that looks like guy Richie. Yeah, you yeah. can tell because he has his own style. And Snatch is a really good movie. Snatch is fantastic. So is Lockstock. Lockstock is I feel like because Lockstock was his first film, not his first film, but the one that everyone was like, oh, wow, well, who is this guy? When he and, and I think people sleep on that because they don't remember because it was his first big one that people that brought his name to the highlight. Did oh. you re-add this to Forgotten Cinema? Because uh, we might, we, I, maybe, we should. maybe we should. Maybe we should put Lockstock and yeah, Two Smoking Barrels Because everybody knows Snatch because Brad Pitt's in it. Yeah. Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels is they're selling weed, right? That, uh, that's that's what they're doing. Pretty and sure, it's, yeah. it's, for God's sakes, people, it has, the young, it has young Sherlock Holmes in it. <laughs> that's the one reason I watched it back in the day. It's like, hey, that's Young Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> All right. And people are like, who's what's Young Sherlock Holmes? That might be a movie we should put on the list because that movie I like quite a bit. You talked about putting that on the Did list. Did you watch you it? Might already put have you ever seen I have that? not seen that. Really? I know about it, but I have oh, not watched it. Oh, you really should watch that. It's really good. Um, we'll put it on the list. Right this second? It's the only way I watch things now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Guy Ritchie is his own director and his own style and his own stuff. And you know, you're watching a guy, Richie movie and it's fun and sleek and slick. And you know, you're going to get those quick cuts going back to like, say, and here's what you missed. Mm -hmm. And it's just really cool. But I think sometimes that puts audiences off. Some audiences don't like to think in their movies. Don't like to go back. (laughs) It's like, wait, I missed this in the scene. I didn't even notice. I got to think. Wait, hold on. 
So when did the Avengers show up? <laughs> and it's like, you're right. They only want superhero movies or action movies. If, if it's a big, big yep. bo- blockbuster bo- uh, movie, they don't want something different or unique or style. I think they do. I just don't. I, I think that sometimes they, I wonder how this movie did on Blu-ray or, Blu-ray or, or DVD. DVD. So it might've done better now, now that you've got Netflix and Hulu and HBO plus right. and all the streaming things. Well, here's the thing. You're asking people to spend now you're asking people to spend like 13, 14, 15 dollars a night per person and go buy food. I mean, and you're releasing four movies on a weekend. And this like we said, this weekend was straight out of Compton. Everyone wants to see straight out of Compton. Oh, we were really yeah, we were yeah, really busy. Nobody I mean, it Man from Uncle did business, but we had ad shows straight out of Compton because that was a big, big movie that people wanted to see. That's why I'm thinking maybe January would have been better for Man from Uncle. You're you're right out of December. So you've got your big December movie out of the way, which at that point was Force Awakens. Maybe January 16th would have been good. Maybe you put it in February. April. March or April. March or April would have worked. Yeah. I mean, that's when they're putting Spring James film. Bond. This yeah. year they're putting James Bond. Or they already put James Bond. I don't know when this episode comes out. It's James Bond out. is sooner out. It's a, oh my God, it was so good. Oh, I loved it. What if you didn't? <laughs> what if you What if you didn't love it? Oh my God. What I'll if, insert a little ding and I'll let people know what I thought. No, what's the ding. song again? I- so as most of you know, we record about 10 weeks ahead of time. And oh man, a lot has happened in those 10 weeks. So unfortunately, I can't tell you my thoughts on James Bond. Can't remember. How's the song go? It's, I don't like the song. I don't remember. It's okay. I like upbeat. I'm not upbeat. I like uh, the theme songs when they're not ballads because I want to get excited for the, the movie that I'm about to watch. I'm okay with I love the Skyfall theme. Mm-hmm. I think Skyfall is great. But obviously, because the Casino Royale's theme is really, really good. Of course it is. This um, movie's three hours long. This movie's way too long coming up. Or already out. Or out. <laughs> or out now. But we're here to talk about Man From U.N.C.L.E. All right, all right. Any final thoughts on Man From U.N.C.L.E.? Ooh, final thoughts. I Like I said, I think a lot of people missed it. Or missed on it. I, give it a shot again. It's fun. It's slick. It, if you like spy movies, you'll love it. I don't know. I just, I like the time. I, I like older films. Mil- or films that take place in... Back in the back day. Back in the day. I like newer, yeah, newer films that take place in a period, but that's not too, too far right. away. Or it's not the 50s. I like the chemistry between the actors. I guess we, we just talked about Guy I Ritchie do. for like 20 minutes. So. I like their histories. I think they both have very interesting backstories. I like that Solo is not this all-American super... So he is an all-American super spy, but they caught him because he's got the bad backstory. Much like right. The Shadow had that. Mm-hmm. I was a villain at one point, and now I have to work for the good guys. Yeah, I like that setup. And yeah. I like we said... There's so much fodder for a sequel between. Oh yeah, there should be. A, they should do another one. Hugh Grant's character, Ilya's. You know, you know, they're setting up Ilya's father to be a character in a sequel. Oh, absolutely. Or you, I think he would become a centerpiece for what, whatever, whatever, whatever happens the next, in the second movie. The yeah, no, no, yeah. they should. I mean, it took Warner Brothers ten years to. They wanted. They were trying to adapt this for a decade, and they finally did. I mean, maybe it's going to take them another ten years to do. By that point, though, these you know, people would be too old. But who cares? It's Hollywood. They'll just de age him, right? Keep it going. Henry Cavill doesn't look too, too much old. I mean, it's only, yeah. But I do know that one, one thing I kept thinking about during this film uh, was you ever play the game Splinter Cell? Uh, Back in the way where you're the spy? Not, I did, but not a lot. But I know I know what of your talk. I used to play, I played some Meta Girl Solid as well. Okay. That was okay. In one of the Splinter Cells, they have a co op mode. So me and my buddy Dave from Two Player Bros. Don't. <laughs> I want to tell you, <laughs> uh, we were playing Splinter at that co-op mode and it was fantastic. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was the one after Chaos Theory. But either way, we beat this whole game. It took us hours and hours. It's a full separate game, the co-op mode. At the end of the game, you are a Russian and American spy. You're on your, ha- your aircraft carrier coming back with this information you spent the whole game stealing. And you each get told by your governments, kill the other. Uh. <laughs> so you're on opposite sides of this hangar jet. And <laughs> you both... You both don't know what each other like what each other did because you're playing online. So I'm like Dave, and he's like, buddy. <laughs> and uh, unlike uh, Solo and Ilya, uh, we uh, one of us did not make it. Oh, it was me. Oh, you <laughs> like I got shot right in the head. You did you not? Did you not try to do something? I didn't know he was behind me, oh, so I got taken oh, out right okay. away. All right. But well, that's too bad. The movie reminded me of that. Give me, give me PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you, Zach, for recommending it. Uh, obviously, we both liked it, regardless of your recommendation. So yes, yeah. well, thank you f- for 
bringing it back to us, reminding us. Of sure, it. absolutely. This is what this season's all about. It's about you guys. It's about you, <laughs> uh, young men and young women out there who want us to talk about movies. And instead of us bringing it to you, you're bringing it to right, us. Right, exactly. So join us next week when we have our our second in the series of uh, audience choose. I can't, I'm trying to think of a good name for this. Audience choice, forgotten cinema, blah, 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 whatever it is. Audience choice. Season audience five. choice, season five. Okay, there we go. We're going to be doing the movie that was recommended to us or suggested to us by John Amenta from Pino Comics. Pino Comics. And that is The Phantom, the Billy Zane movie, The Phantom. I have not seen this movie in quite some time, so I'm interested to see if... I mean, I remember watching it and I was into it uh, in terms of, wow, it's like Indiana Jones, like that kind of swashbuckling. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. But honestly, yeah, I, haven't, I want to say I have not seen this movie since the theaters. So this will be interesting because yeah. this is 90s, early 90s. Like mid right. 90s. After, mid 90s. It's after the shadow. So it's probably 95, 96. Probably, probably not. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, obviously we've done our research right now. So, so John, <laughs> you're up next week and we'll, you'll, we'll hear from everyone from John about what, um, why he wanted us to do this movie. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I I'm excited for this season because some of these movies I haven't seen, some of these movies I haven't seen in quite some time, some of these movies I would not have picked. But, um, I'm, I'm curious to see how we do. So this is exciting. Good, good times, everyone. Good times. All right. So join us next week. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Thanks for listening. I am Mike Field. And I'm Mike Butler. And this has been Forgotten Cinema. Season five, audience choice. Field? Yes. Take it like a pussy. You know I will. <laughs> <laughs>